Hello everybody, welcome to Red Toolhouse. When it comes to preparedness and backup energy for your homestead or your farm or whatever you've got, which makes more sense, having a generator or embracing solar power and some of the new modern technologies when it comes to self power generation? I think it's an important discussion for us for several reasons. Preparedness, should uh, things get crazy globally, just a good backup in case you lose grid power and you've got a lot of food stores. And economics or efficiency as the cost of grid tied power goes up and up and up. So come along, let's have a conversation. Now when it comes to the house, when we lose grid tied power, I have a 10,000 watt generator that I can roll out, fire that thing up, and it powers most of the house. It's not gonna run my, my big AC units for, for a house that size but it takes care of what we need. <clears throat> so there are several concerns when it comes to the generator. One is the efficiency. Obviously we need to burn gas and with that generator, the age that it is, the size that it is, and depending on the load, it takes about a gallon of gas per hour, maybe an hour and a half, just depends on what we're using. And regardless of load, that generator is going to be running at that full speed. It's gonna be producing power that isn't used. Another issue I have with generators is the wear and tear on them. Unless you get a big home fixed unit, a lot of these generators are not made to run continuously day after day after day. And that shows up over time where parts wear out, uh, things just kind of get rattled loose. So you shorten the life expectancy of that generator. So you may be thinking, well, Troy, it sounds like you're a pro solar guy. And to that I say, yeah, but with a big asterisk because your solar is only good as the number of panels you have and the ability to store the energy that's produced by that panel array and, of course, by what your weather's like. I've actually been waiting to do this video for about two weeks now because we've had so much rain. I need a blue sky to be able to show you how we're testing products and, and what works and what makes sense for us and new technology that's coming out. Well, one of the other big issues when it comes to building a solar system that isn't talked about a lot, it's kind of the dirty little secret when it comes to solar energy, is a lot of mixed components, they don't play well together. They're, they're no bueno. So if you start with a solar array and say, I've got this solar panel from this manufacturer, it's a 200 watt, you really got to look at the details and say, okay, I, I can afford to buy four of those. Well, a year later, I can afford to buy four more. So don't just go out and get four other panels. You think, well, I'm just going to, any panel will work. I'll throw it in there. That's always been an issue because the charge controllers, they, all of that is expecting continuity in the, those elements. Same with the What's really got me intrigued and, and kind of the, the meat of this conversation is that technology is changing as well. And while I'm no solar expert, over the last five years of having this channel and, and looking at these products and using them, companies are saying, hey, okay, we want Troy to see what he thinks about this type of stuff. So this company by the name of Optisolex reached out to me and says, we want you to try our new panels. These things are super efficient. We want you to compare them against your other portable panels and see what you think. So, so we're gonna check those out, but they also have a new piece of technology, which I think is fantastic. So. Here, this little box I hold in my hand is a charge controller. And unlike most charge controllers where you have multiple inputs, outputs, you got to figure out how to manage it. Display screens like the, the charge controller, the 40 app when I have at camp, man, it's got 16 different screens you can go through for configuration. This is plug and play. This is, this is what you see is what you get. And, and this is kind of neat to see. So not only does it simplify charge controlling, but it also allows you to put dissimilar things together. And we're going to... <clears throat> All right, so we basically have a head-to-head -head test here. And we have one cloud in the sky, and guess where it is? But what I've got is the Optisol X 400 watt panel. And this panel is super light. I mean, it is, it's crazy. In fact, I thought it felt kind of cheap, as light as it was, but I've been using it for a while. It, it seems to be rigid where it needs to be rigid, but lighter. You can actually kind of see how the panels are made up. This is my all powers. This is older technology. So 400 watt panel, 400 watt panel. The all power is technically a 600 watt panel, but I've got two of the panels folded under, so four. So we're head to head, four, 400, 400. 
And when the sun comes out, <laughs> well, actually, I can show you now, but the efficiency, so 400 watt, 400 watt, never, ever on solar panels will you get that rating just because there's so many variables that come into play. A little bit of haze, um, where you are latitude-wise in relation to the sun, the angle, all that type of stuff. But the efficiencies of this panel, it's generating a lot more electricity across the board than this, regardless of when a cloud's coming over, when there's full sun. So right now, they're both getting the exact same amount of sun. We've got 25 watts coming from that 400 panel. And we got 61 watts coming from this panel. And that's with big cloud. What's interesting about the OptiSolex panel as well, as we wait for the sun to come back out, is it has a zipper in it. So I can unzip the panel into two separate panels. So we could bust them out into two 200 watt panels. They have their own plugs, their own leads. Right now I've got them plugged together so they're producing 40 volts and you know, right around uh, 10 amps, a little less than 10 amps. All right, the sun's out 385, 386, 291, 291, 391, 390, 289. So yeah, so running about 25% more efficient here on this panel comparatively. So I brought the panels back over here to the truck, so I want to show the, uh, we use one of the bricks here. And so since this is a charge controller built in, we can simply plug this in to the panel and then come straight out of this charge controller and go straight to one of my batteries. So this is a LifePo battery I use up at camp all the time. I have another one down at the barn that I use to run my diesel pump. And it's, there's no easy way to charge that. I don't have a battery charger, like a car charger, that can charge LifePo. I need to go buy one. But it's quite simple. Using something like this, it allows us to connect basic jumpers to this battery and charge it as such. So I'm going to hook this up. And again, it's just labeled on the back, PV input. So PV input. You can't mess it up because there only goes one spot. So here's my hot and my ground coming from the charge controller. And then, so any cable, any jumper cable would work, jumper system. This is uh, what Optisolix sent me to test. So it's just your typical solar panel plug with ring connector here. So we're going to put this on our negative. We're going to put the other one on the hot. Plug in hot. Plug in negative. Solar panels and LCD displays don't work very good. So you can see 320. So here comes a cloud, so we're dropping 200. So charging a basic battery with the solar panel and this tiny little brick is a complete system. So that's what I love about this. So I can take this unit down to my barn where I have my bigger battery set to run my diesel pump, I can toss this on the ground um, with that brick and be able to charge that battery directly. Don't have to have a charge controller, don't have to have all these other wires. Or you don't even have to use this. If I wanted to have a regular solar panel, that's the beauty of the brick. The brick isn't unique to the solar bag. The brick can be used on any panel. It can be used on multiple panels. So I could go get the panel off the chicken coop if I wanted to, get another little 25 watt panel or a 100 watt panel connect them in series, use the brick to regulate the power between the panels, and then another brick to handle as a charge controller, I'm able to combine all those different types of panels to be able to produce the power I need and go directly to my battery source. Now it's important to point out when you're using multiple solar panels of different makes, different inputs, you need one OptiSolex Solex Brick S1 per panel. So you need one brick per panel. And the brick by itself can handle an input load 
as much as 450 watts. But if you do connect them in series, then the maximum input per brick is 230 watts. They actually include a pretty good diagram that shows that. One brick per panel, and then how they're connected in series to manage three different panels of three different output types. And of course, going straight to your battery so you don't need a charge controller since this is the charge controller. Well, in full disclosure of this, this product is so new, I don't even get to keep it. So I am being paid to review this and see what I think about it and its effectiveness here on our farm. I've had it for about a month now, and yeah, it, it's doing everything it, it claims to. I do have to send it back. I don't keep, get to keep it since it is so new, so I, I can't attest to the longevity of the product. So far, it seems like it's built well. You know, those things are always a concern. Uh, the metal casing on the brick, all the cabling, all the wires, all that looks to be good quality stuff. But, you know, time would tell how, how well that's going to hold up. Well, if you'd like more information on Optisol X system, I'll put a link down in the video description, including a link to the Kickstarter campaign. This is brand new tech, so they're just now getting it rolled out. But it looks to be very promising, very exciting what they've got going on here. So getting back to the original question at the beginning, generate versus solar, right now I'm still in a both type situation, but I am working to retire the entire generator. And one key thing that sticks out in my mind, um, and I don't want to get doom and gloom, but if we do have this economic collapse where culture as we know it, industry as we know it's upside down and it's kind of fend for yourselves type of thing, to me, a running generator is like a siren call saying, hey, come check out my stuff. Come see if you can take my stuff. These things all run quiet. And you can, you can hide in the woods a lot easier and still produce power and still have some of the things you need and not be drawing a lot of attention to yourself. Store that wherever you want to store it in the old uh, prepper memory bank. But as I see this technology improve, as, as panels get more efficient, as battery storage gets more efficient, as what we see here with Optisolix get more efficient and more simple for the basic person to, to be able to put together, basic like me, to be able to put together, then that intrigues me more and more and I find myself leaning more and more in that direction. Are you always going to be a diehard generator person? Let me know what you think. Again, there's parts and components for all of these things that need to be replaced or be repaired. So that's something we got to factor in as well. Well, I appreciate the conversation. We can get started down in the comments. If you want to know specifics about the Optus Olex, I'll put links below in the description as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I pray you have a great week. Take care.